This episode of Access to the Arts is being made possible through the support of First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together. And by Phillips Drugs. Phillips Drugs is your good neighbor pharmacy with free delivery and pill pack 2.0. Phillips Drugs with three locations, east side, west side, or downtown Richmond, and online at phillipsdrugs.com. Hi, I'm Eric Marsh. We're standing outside Diva. What is that? We'll find out in a little while. We'll also find out about biking and whining and city arts life, city something. All of that and more on this month's Access to the Arts. This episode of Access to the Arts. I'm Eric Marsh. Very glad to be in a, a place that I've never been, relatively new to the community. It's called Diva. I'm with Amy and Andy Dudas. And um, first of all, tell us why the name Diva? Well, Diva stands for the Dudas Inspiration Venue for the Arts. Okay. So we just shortened it to Diva, and uh, that makes it easy for everyone to remember. What is Diva supposed to be or do? Diva is a community space. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and the mission generally is to make the arts accessible to everyone, and all arts accessible to everyone. So the idea is a community space that can be used by any artist for any art form, and uh, present that to an audience of any size. And uh, it's about the art of creation, it's about the process, and it's just art for art's sake. So we wanted to make that available. Talk about your process. You decided to open this location, open it up, put it in the downtown area. How long have you all been thinking about this as a concept for the Richmond Wayne County area? We have really been thinking about this for a couple of years now. So my office used to be on the west side of town, uh, but we've been very intrigued by the progress and the development that's been going on in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, we felt it was important to invest in that as a part of this community. So we looked to the downtown as a place to relocate my office and then to also uh, do something artistically re related. We both are very involved in the arts and so um, just kind of the evolving discussion and this is this is what we ended up with. Talk a little bit about the space that we're in. You decided to do obviously a very colorful wall behind us. We've got a stage here, some seating. What do you envision happening here right now? Well the space, we wanted to make the space physically just a pleasant place to be that feels inviting, that feels safe, and ultimately inspirational, I suppose. Um, but the overall concept is that our space can be configured to anyone's needs, to anyone's desires, whether that be for a demonstration, for a performance of any art form. We're, we're seeking to defi redefine the word art in as many possible ways. Any, how you define art is how we define art. And that way, we kind of balance the, 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 the field for someone who maybe they don't have the ability or the physical space or the infrastructure to create something that's larger than they might be able to do out of their home or in, in some smaller venue possibly. Mm -hmm. But with, with this, you get a nice intimate feel with, with limited seating, but it's, it gives everyone the opportunity to create anything they want. This could be someone doing acoustical music on an evening. Right. This Absolutely. could be um, someone reading poetry on an evening. Yes. Um, this could be almost any small, very close gathering of people. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's and so we have and we do have a little the support that we offer to the artist as they want to use the space. Like you mentioned, we've got the seating, we've got some staging, and we're in the process of trying to acquire. A, uh, a art hanging system to, so that we can display visual and graphic arts so that if someone wanted to have a 
you know, so it can be used as a gallery, it can be used as, you know, for a poetry slam or a small chamber concert, a small little dance recital, just anything, anybody, anything that your heart, art desires. <laughs> How's that for you? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, one of the things that you all are working on out of here right now is some improv. Tell us about how that came about and what your, um, what your role in that is. So we've always been very intrigued by improv, and I, I did some management and production of improv in college. Um, and so we wanted to start and form an improv troupe. Improv is great training for, for stage performers. Uh, so we wanted to do that. So what we were able to do was we, we were able to uh, get a grant from the Wayne County Foundation to train up a company of improv performers uh, using a professional equity actress who leads the workshop to do that. And then the idea is to have regular improv performances um, in the space for a, an audience. So that's, that's going to be kind of a resident offering of the space itself um, and just part of the Diva Productions things that we do internally. You've got an interesting um, business model in that you're not always charging the people who use yeah. the space. Tell us a little bit about that and, and why you kind of decided to go that way. Again, the, the general mission is to make art accessible to everyone. So this being a community space, our, our idea is if you're not charging your audience, we're not charging you. So if you're going to charge the audience, then that's a different kind of fee structure. But um, th the point is not to get people in the seats necessarily. People who do art want people to see it. Of course, they sure. want to share it. But the idea would be uh, that if my example is always if you if you've always wanted to stage a production of Waiting for Godot, then you can stage a production of Waiting for Godot. There could be one person in the audience and that would be okay. It's about the process and not necessarily about how many people you get into the space. So that's what we wanted to make it a place to do. This is the opening salvo, so to speak, but this is not the end of where you see Diva going. Can no. you talk to us a little bit about where you hope this can evolve into? Well, when we purchased this building roughly about 12 months ago, um, we knew that we had an opportunity to, to put something on the ground floor in pretty quickly, pretty immediately. Mm -hmm. And that offers our, our one of our cornerstone values for Diva is accessibility for everyone, regardless of, to, to erase barriers, to erase boundaries. And one of those are is a phys physical accessibility to the building. And so while we're on the ground floor, it is physically accessible to, to meet those sorts of challenges. But the building, does have on the third floor a nearly 3,000 square foot ballroom, just a wide open space, no beams, no support pillars. And ultimately that's where our goal is, is to go, is to go upstairs, which will then broaden our abilities. It'll give us so much more depth and breadth to, to what we hope to produce, to what we hope to provide, and ultimately for the community t for, to, to, cons to be as consumers of the arts, but also as producers of the arts too. But we have a big obstacle in the way is this building doesn't have an elevator. The building was built in 1878, and there are a lot of steps to get to the third floor. So until we can procure that funding for the elevator, we will stay on the ground floor, but we do have much loftier plans for, our, for Diva. We're just about out of time, but if there's an artist who's just seeing this, who's thinking, I might want to go into there, how do they reach out to you all? Uh, so our website is imadiva.org, <laughs> and uh, all of the information that's, that you need is on that website. There is a use request form that can be filled out, and it explains all of the fee structure, that sort of thing, if there's a charge for the event. Um, and then we're always available, Andy's usually very available, to communicate back and forth with people about what they might need and what, what they would like to do. And in Amy Dudas, thank you very much for letting us use Diva for access to the arts today. Thank you, we're happy to have you. Welcome back to Access to the Arts. We're talking with Kim Boffman, who is yes. chairman of the, chairperson, I guess, yes. of the Bike Tourberfest um, event that is taking place along with, kind of in conjunction with the Oktoberfest yes. in the Depot District. Wow, that's a lot of festing going on. <laughs> well, it's a good time. This sounds like a really good time. <laughs> it is. Tell me how long this event has been going on. This will be our sixth year for Biketoberfest, um, and it's to support the Cardinal Greenway, 
the Wayne County portion, all 22 miles. Okay. Um, for someone who wants to be involved in this, what do they need to do? Well, the easiest thing is to register for the bike ride on the day of the event, which is September 29th. Go to biketoberfest.com and you can register there and ride your bike. Just enjoy the trail that day. Okay. Um, how far do I have to ride? I haven't been on a bike for a while, so am I, am I doing a 22 mile something or other? Well, there, there are those links. Uh, we have up to 56 miles that are supported for some of the superior bike riders. But, Not me. <laughs> but you can go five minutes on the trail. It really doesn't matter. I mean, the point is that you get on the trail and you support the Cardinal Greenway. We do have supported routes at designated places, like five miles, where there'll be stops. There'll be food, snacks, and sometimes there might be a, a horse to pet or some musician. You just never know what you'll find on the trail that day. Okay. The reason we're bringing this into access to the arts is you've brought something new to this event this year. Tell us about that. Well, one of the things we wanted to do was increase the ridership. And a way to do that is to figure out why someone would pick up a bike and ride. And while we, could, we were reaching all the bike riders that we thought we knew of, mm -hmm. we thought how to get to access to other programs. So one of the ideas that came to us was maybe some of the other nonprofits who had been working on the trail during the day, who had been spending their time to feature, would be interested in publicizing our event, but what would be in it for them? So we found 14 nonprofits that were willing to participate this year, and the nonprofit that can refer the most writers to us this year will win $1,000. Okay, so some of those are including some of the folks that are involved in this, Richmond Art Museum, Richmond Civic Theater, um, Richmond Symphony Orchestra, so you've got 14 out there. So yes. all they have to do is go to your website, register, and pick that organization organization that brings the most referrals gets a thousand dollars. It's that simple. Ride a bike, enjoy the day, and also support the nonprofit of your of your choice, your favorite nonprofit. Sounds good. Tell us one more time where that sign up can take place. At biketuberfest.com. It's T-O-U-R burfest.com. Okay. Kim, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. Hello, I am Amy Kohler Anderson. And I am Kate Huser Santucci. And we are currently installing the Stratum installation at the Meyer Artway, located at the Indiana University's Eastern Campus in Richmond, Indiana. While we were familiar with each other's work, we'd seen uh, our artwork displayed around town, mostly around the Dayton, Ohio area. And I was an admirer of her work, and I'd like to think she was an admirer of mine I also. Was. I was. <laughs> and so it, it happened at a, um, a Dayton Visual Arts Center harvest party that I had a spontaneous idea, like, hey, we should collaborate on something sometime. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that the Dayton Visual Arts Center was doing a call for shows at the time, and I said, we should do an entire show. And it kind of kept evolving from there. <laughs> so when Amy asked me, um, she didn't know me. We had met in passing maybe a couple times, been introduced. So that was super brave because it could have been, it could have been a mess. <laughs> brave or crazy. Um, and so we started uh, coming up with the idea of how we wanted to do this collaborative show. So we had started on, um, we decided multiple panels and that it wouldn't just be a, you know, I work on half of something and you finish it. Instead, we decided to do this like really deeply collaborative process where um, Amy started the first 20 panels and I started the second 20 panels. And then um, we worked in layers. So as we finished a layer, we would just call each other up and say like, hey, are you ready to trade? And we ended up um, each adding multiple layers to every piece. Um, the, the interesting part of it was, you know, our, our materials aren't technically supposed to be layered, so uh, that was a fun challenge, creating infrastructures or um, surfaces that the other's work could be built on. I work primarily in acrylic mediums, which are water-based. Um, it includes um, acrylic paint, uh, various gel mediums, such as uh, pouring medium, gloss medium, matte medium, that sort of thing. But for this show, I pulled out a lot of other tricks and trades, like uh, shredded shredded money, uh, vintage silk thread, uh, coffee stirs, uh, wig hair, which was one of Kate's favorites, and um, a variety of other materials that you can read about. And then you want to talk about your materials? Yes. I am primarily an encaustic artist. Um, encaustic is a mixture of beeswax and Demar varnish 
and oil-based mediums. So traditionally, like the oil paints and wax don't really mix with the um, acrylics. So we really did have to be kind of innovative with our surfaces. And Amy would provide a rough surface for the wax to grab onto um, when I was working, or I would, you know, smooth an area that she could float the acrylic paint over the surface. And yeah, it's we kind of broke a lot of um, rules about how we were supposed to use these mediums together, which was super, super fun. Yeah. Well, the entire show is basically not only about breaking rules, but about getting out of your comfort zone, working on top of other people's, another artist's work, and, um, and then getting it back again, you know, working on it, giving it away, getting it back, and then realizing, okay, now it has completely evolved into something different. Now what do I do? And it was a really fun challenge. But. Yeah. There were a lot of 90 degree turns yeah. where you get it back. It's like, that is not where I saw that going. Yeah. So now we're going to go here. And you know, But that was great, actually. They went through some very awkward teenage years through many of the panels, through many of the phases. But we were able, we were able to pull them back together through, through yeah. our various materials. There are a couple of logs where you'll see where we've scratched something off. It's like, that just did not work. And I took it off and, you know, just had to change it completely. So. So the show will be here through September 26th, and there will be a closing reception on September 26th. So if you would like to come out and take a look or hear us speak, we will be talking about the work on that day. Um, but anytime, come on out and check out the show. Welcome back to Access to the Arts, where We've changed guests. We're going to speak with uh, Sean Dingworth, who is with the Richmond Art Museum, about the fifth annual Wine Down on the Farm. Yes. Wine, W-I-N-E? Correct. All right, I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it is our fifth annual. It's a joint collaboration between uh, Indiana Landmarks and the Richmond Art Museum, and it is held at the Huddleston House uh, in Cambridge City. That sounds like a really nice venue. Yes. Talk about some of what's going to happen throughout the day for this event. Sure, so there's a couple of art components to it, um, and also food and wine. Uh, in terms of the art, the Richmond Art Museum loans works from our permanent collection, and we hang those in the Huddleston House, and they're generally of that time period of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second component is we have the Richmond Group artists paint during the day, and then those works are made available for sale that evening. Nice. Um, as people want to get involved with this, we haven't told them the date, I don't think. Right. So what's the date? September 21st. And how do they get registered for this event? It's a dinner, so I assume you need to hear from them That's ahead right. of time. Uh, so we have an Eventbrite. Uh, also, it's available on Indiana Landmarks website as well as the Richmond Art Museum website. You can go on and register there. That's a different venue for you all. You continue yes. to reach out and work with other people. Why is that? Yeah, well, we consider ourselves a regional art museum, and uh, so it's important for us to get out throughout the county. Uh, it's also a great way to partner with uh, another large nonprofit organization like Indiana Landmarks, mm -hmm. uh, reach a new audience, which is great. You have works there. You had a number of works that were out during the time of your renovation. Have you Correct. gotten some of those back? And how many of your works are still out at this yeah, point? So not quite all, but about 70% are back. So we had over 300 works on loan throughout the community. Uh, we still have works at the Huddleston House. Those will come down after this event. Uh, so we have about 100 works, uh, including the Morrison Reeves Library that we have uh, art on display. We talked with Lance before about Pottery Palooza, yes. but you've got some other things that continue to happen all throughout the fall. Are there a couple of things you want to mention real quickly? Uh, sure. Well, I certainly want to give a plug for our art classes. Great opportunity to take classes at the Richmond Art Museum. Uh, and then we have our very popular annual show coming up. It'll be the 120th. Uh, and I also just encourage people to come down to the Richmond Art Museum, not only to see the renovated museum, mm -hmm. uh, but this is our 120th anniversary. And for that, um, all the galleries are devoted to works from the permanent collection. So probably a unique opportunity to see uh, a large percentage of our holdings. Nice. Thanks for spending the time. Good Thank luck you. with Wine Down on the Farm. Appreciate it. Be sure to check that out at the Huddleston Farmhouse Inn. Go to richmondartmuseum.org for more information. Hi, I'm Ryan Shaw and I'm from Richmond Civic Theatre and I'm here today just to tell you a little bit about some upcoming auditions and show dates that you might be interested in. The first one is our Outsiders production. We'll be auditioning on September 9th and 10th at 7 o'clock. Charlie Brown 
We'll be auditioning Sunday, September 13th at 6.30 and Monday, October 1st at 6.30. Aside from upcoming auditions, we have some productions that you're going to want to catch. The Aristocats open September 29th at 7 o'clock and a matinee performance on the 30th at 2 o'clock. The Christians, a visionary production, opens September 14th and there's another show on the 15th. Dracula opens October 19th and runs to the 28th. If, if you've yet to do so, make sure you stop by Civic Theater to get your season membership. Visit Bonnie in the box office and she'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching this episode of Access to the Arts on WETV Channel 20. I'm speaking with Monica Coachline, Executive Director of the Richmond Symphony Orchestra, who is involved in a lot of different <laughs> things, events. Um, mm -hmm. Monica, how are you today? I'm really good. It's good. a busy time of the year. It is always a bit. Well, I guess you do come, you're coming out of the summer, which is a little bit slower, it's a, maybe. It's a different kind of work. It's a different kind of busy. Okay, <laughs> more of the planning process, the and planning now process. you're back into it. Mm -hmm. A couple of things that that we want to hit today. First of all, your your community series mm -hmm. really kind of gets a start mm -hmm. with Brass on the Grass. That's coming up September second. Talk about that. Sure, that event is held at Forest Hills. We found a nice partnership there. Uh, that'll be held on September the second, beginning at five thirty. Um, it's a uh, Quintet, brass musicians, they'll play some pops music, some really popular, enjoyable things to listen to, uh, led by our principal trumpet, Wes Woolard. Um, the, the concert itself is absolutely free. Anybody's welcome, whether they're a Forest Hills member or not a member. Um, drinks will be available for purchase during the concert. Mm -hmm. And if people want to stay for dinner afterwards, again, whether they're a member or not a member of Forest Hills, they're welcome to stay. They can make reservations in advance if they'd like. Is this an outside event? That's our hope. Last year we tried that and it had to be inside, but we're very hopeful that it'll be outside. Okay. Well. Hence the name, Grass on the Grass, I had to ask. Are we going to be out on the yeah, golf course a little bit? Supposed to be at a hole. We're supposed to be at one of the holes. Okay. Um, we mentioned this on a previous episode, mm -hmm. but want to remind people because it's actually going to be here. Your first concert um, of the mm -hmm. year is coming up. Right around the corner. It is coming up on the 22nd of September. Yes, it's I get the date days. right? Yes. Okay. And your special artist is? Alyssa Park. She's a violinist, so she'll be joining us. The concert is the riches of the 20th century. Tickets are available. Season's tickets tickets are available currently on our website. Okay, richmondsymphony.org. Yes. All right, and now we need to transition into <laughs> city... Arts. Arts. <laughs> city Life is getting a new name, mm -hmm. City Arts. Tell us why the name change. Well, I think uh, everybody said to us, what what does city life mean? And uh, the original reason that it was created several years ago by Mayor Dave Snow was that it was to highlight the arts organizations in our community. It's a great opportunity for us to work together collaboratively, to bring arts to the park for free, mm -hmm. um, to break down some of those typical barriers, whether they're perceived or actual barriers, just a free night of fun. Yeah. Um, we have decided to switch it to city arts so people know what it is. We still will have the pond fire, weather permitting. Yes. Um, and for the first time, city arts is going to have uh, a theme. So it will be city arts presents a nightmare before Christmas. Okay, <laughs> so this is really going to be fun. Yeah, so we're currently uh, in the planning process of working really hard because we're a little bit behind, but we're on our way. Um, we've engaged Richmond Civic Theater. We have our Richmond Art Museum that will be present. We're hoping to engage Amigos. We have the symphony. We have the community orchestra. Just anybody who is in the arts community that mm -hmm. wants to be a part of the event can it's contact us. going to be more of an evening event? It is an evening event. It starts at 5. Um, activities will be available until about 8. And then uh, beginning at 8, we're actually going to end by showing the movie A Nightmare Before Christmas in the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interactive. Kids going to be able to get involved, some hands-on yeah. type of events? So this year, a little different than in years past. We'd heard that there's so much here for kids to do and not a lot for adults. So we'll actually have some kid, uh, lots of kid-friendly events, um, opportunities to get engaged. Um, we're actually going to have some art painting and some different things for adults, um, as well as demonstrations this year. And for the first time, we'll add a little bit of a beverage option to the event. I like beverage <laughs> options. All right, so Brass on the Grass is coming up September 2nd. Mm -hmm. Your first concert is coming up September 22nd. Yes. And then City Arts, look for that name change and maybe a slight logo change maybe? Absolutely. All right, that's coming up on October 6th. Thank you very much for spending some time, Monica. Thanks, Eric, for having me.
That's this month's Access to the Arts. I hope you enjoyed finding out about all the things that are going on in the community. Be sure to check out some of the websites, and as we leave you, we'll leave you with some other ideas about what's going on with the arts in Wayne County. Thanks for watching. This episode of Access to the Arts has been made possible through the support of First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together. And by Phillips Drugs. Phillips Drugs is your good neighbor pharmacy with free delivery and pill pack 2.0. Phillips Drugs with three locations, east side, west side, or downtown Richmond, and online at phillipsdrugs.com.